Hello, Dumpsterinos and Frugalistas. Today, I want to talk to you about prepping, about building your prepper pantry. I've mentioned many times here and there, you know, whenever we find canned goods, for example, or granola bars, something like that with a long shelf life, I mention, oh, this would be great for the prepper pantry. And I know a lot of you are preppers. I know a lot of you have prepper pantries. A few people have asked, what is she prepping for? People prep for a variety of shit hit the fan, SHTF, scenarios. It can be any emergency, right? It could be a weather event, like a blizzard, or a tornado, or a hurricane. It could be another pandemic lockdown. It could be job loss, or inflation not being able to afford food anymore for whatever reason, lack of income, food too expensive. People prep for grid down scenarios. You know, when you lose electricity, you lose gas, you lose your water supply. People prep for World War III. People prep for zombie apocalypse and alien invasion. People prep for whatever, whatever emergency scenario you can come up with, people prep for it. Uh, people prep for nuclear blasts and nuclear fallout. People have bunkers. There are a lot of uh, different aspects of prepping depending on which particular scenario you think you're prepping for. But the basic item that everybody starts with is food. You want to have a supply of food just in case. And it makes sense. If you have nothing else hoarded, why wouldn't you have food? I don't understand when people argue against having a supply of food saved up. You know you're going to eat again in the future. Now with inflation, people say, well, today's the best day to shop because prices are just going to keep going up and they're not going to come back down. I've been thinking for a while that unless you have a lot of money, a lot of disposable income, it's too late. It's too late to prep. If you haven't prepped, it's just too late because everything's too expensive. And then I thought, is that really true? There's got to be something out there, something left that is still affordable, that is still frugal enough that people can stock up so they will have a supply of emergency food. People also prep, besides food, you know, medical supplies, that's a big one. Um, energy, you know, like wood for your fireplace or, uh, you know, solar panels or a generator, that kind of thing. And then people also prep self-defense. But we just want to start with food. If you're brand new to prepping, you want to start with having a supply of emergency food. And I have come up with, I think, 10, 10 categories that are still basically affordable you know, relative to everything else that is completely unaffordable, but areas you can start. If you haven't prepped, if you don't have food stocked up yet, before winter comes, before the blizzards come, before the apocalypse comes, before the nuclear bombs go off, before we are officially in World War III, before global warming or whatever climate change, you know, destroys everything. That's another big thing. I mean, that's another big thing you prep for. You're prepping food because of all these weather disasters, either you have the flooding or you have the drought and a lot of different crops are in short supply. Rice, corn, wheat, tomatoes. Look at Pakistan. It's, it's like underwater. I mean, it's, it's so bad what's happening weather wise. So anyway, let's get to the list of 10 food items that are still affordable that you could start your prepper pantry with. And if you're saying, no, nope, I absolutely don't have any money. I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know what to tell you if you don't. Other than look at what you're spending money on now and see what you can cut out. What can you shift? For example, I'm just gonna say it. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Soda, soda pop, soda, bubbly drinks, fizzy drinks, whatever you call it from wherever you're from. There's no nutrition in soda. Whether you're getting diet soda or the sugary soda, soda is really bad for you. And if you are pinching pennies, if you do not have unlimited income to just do whatever you want with, 
Soda is a complete waste of your money. So if you are wasting money on soda ever, you must stop it. Whatever you're spending on soda, you can divert into buying nutritious food so that you have emergency supply. I spit, sorry, I got all excited and I spit. Emergency food for your prepper pantry. So let's get into the list of foods that are nutritious and are still basically affordable and will keep you alive. And you know, you're all grown ups. you make your own decisions, you decide what works for you, what you want, da 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 But these are just my suggestions of what I think is still the most affordable and will, you know, have a good long shelf life for you. Here we go. All right, first you need to have water. I know we hate to have to pay for water. Every human being deserves free, fresh, clean water. We hate the plastic bottles, but you cannot live without water. You have to have an emergency supply of water and water is actually pretty cheap in the stores. You can pick up a few 24 packs. It's not that expensive. Rice. You can still get a 20 pound bag of rice for under $10. This is food that will keep you alive. There's a lot of food in a 20 pound bag of rice. It'll keep you alive. It'll keep your belly full. Rice, rice, rice. Our favorite pasta. Still affordable, still available. I recommend spaghetti because a pound of spaghetti will take up a lot less space in your pantry than a pound of ziti or penne or bow ties or any other shape. Spaghetti. Oats. Here I've got your old fashioned oats. I've got oat groats somewhere in the pantry. I also have steel cut oats. Oats are a good, affordable, nutritious grain. Delicious, good for you. Yay, oats, stock up on oats. Flour, so you can bake your own bread. Yes, we're heavy into the grains here. They're affordable, they will keep you full, they will give you the nutrition you need. You don't even need to stock up on yeast because you can make your own sourdough starter. So, flour. All right, canned goods. There's a lot we can say about canned goods. The benefit of canned goods is they have an incredibly long shelf life and they're cooked. You can just open them up and eat right out of the can, even if you're not able to heat the food up. A lot of preppers have a lot of canned soup. I'm not a big fan of canned soup in the prepper pantry because a lot of what's in the can is broth. A lot of space is being taken up by broth, and I think it makes a lot more sense with your canned goods to have food items that are just more solidly packed in there, like canned beans, corn, but not so much corn because there's not that much nutrition in corn, other various canned vegetables, and then you can make your own soup out of those as long as you have, you know, some bouillon cubes. Add bouillon cubes to the list because I didn't mention bouillon cubes. A lot of people stock up on their canned meats. The canned chicken, the tuna, the spam, the Vienna sausages, canned turkey, canned beef, you know, canned meat. But that's really not that affordable. I think there are other protein sources that are a lot more affordable than canned meats. Canned fruits are lovely, you know, canned peaches or applesauce or canned pineapple, but they're also a little bit pricey. So you make that decision on your own what canned goods you want but I think the canned fruits are a little, a little bit pricey. They're just a little bit too expensive. So instead, I would go with dried fruit. Raisins, prunes, dried apricots, dehydrated apples, dehydrated bananas. Maybe not as exciting as canned fruit, but much more affordable, and they take up much less space. Peanut butter, everybody's favorite affordable, yummy protein source. I recommend peanut butter. Dried beans and lentils. Lentils have the advantage of cooking much faster than beans do. They're both affordable, great protein sources, high in fiber. They take up a lot less space than your canned beans. So stock up on your dried beans, legumes, and lentils. Last but not least, you have salt. 
you want to have spices, you want to have things to cook with, you want things to flavor your food, but if you can't afford lots and lots and lots of different spices and herbs and seasonings, you've got to make sure to have salt. Salt is very inexpensive. You, you don't want to not have salt, right? And it has lots of uses besides just cooking. You can gargle with salt if you have a sore throat. You can clean with salt. Salt is good stuff. Don't forget the salt. Well, thanks for watching Dumpsterinos and Frugalistas. I hope this list helps. I can't wait to read your comments below, what you think of the list, what you think would be a better idea to stock up on, what you think is more frugal, what you think is more nutritious, what your suggestions are. Of course, you know, one encourages folks to grow their own food and grow microgreens and do whatever you can. But I'm just, this was just foods that are out there in the grocery stores that are still affordable. They're still in stock. You can still find this stuff somewhere. So let me know what you think. Are you guys prepping? Do you believe in prepping or do you just want to live happily in the moment? All right. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye. Stay safe out there.